Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at this, and we're going to take a look at placing, or how do you place, say, for example, uh, two quarter inch 20 nuts inside of an object like this that you're 3D printing. Now, there's been a couple videos out there, but I'm going to actually use Cura and show you how you can do this with Cura. So the one thing first that you'll need is the plug-in pause at height. And you can just uh, Google that, and I'll put the link below. And long story short, what you do is you simply put this in the plug-in folder of uh, Cura, Restart Cura, and it will pop up. Uh, most of the time, if it's not there, all you need to do is click Pause at Height. But we're going to come back to this in a second because we're going to need to fill out some of this information. So we're going to need to go back here to Basic. Um, and then what we're going to do is really go over here to View Mode. And then what we're going to do is want to go to Layer. Now we can see the layers here. Now what we do is we need to figure out where the layers come to um, where we need to be. So now you can see we're past the opening. So you can see 51 is our last full opening in this where we have the uh, opening. Now one of the things that we're going to do um, that I want to mention is, is again with the bottom here um, the idea is to cinch up against the bottom with these and then also to cinch up the top. So this is one of the reasons we need to go with two bolts uh, in here. So what we're going to do is we now know we have 51 layers. So we need to stop at 51 layers. And we know the layer height is 0.3. So what we're going to do is go to the calculator here. And then we're going to go 0 0.3 times 51 and that's going to equal 15.3 millimeters. And so what we need to do is go back to our plug-in, and we're going to have to say here, instead of 5, 15.3. Now the other thing we're going to need to do is, for some reason, this defaults at 190. This is a problem, because this says this is going to park the head 190 millimeters away. And what happens on a 200 millimeter bed, this is going to run it off, and this is going to cause you problems. So in this case, I'm just going to offset by 20 which should be good enough. And now you want to offset this just enough for your carriage and everything to be out of the way. And I happen to know, you know, moving at 20 millimeters will be enough for me to drop the bolts into this structure. So I've got this set. Now the other one is move Z. I'm not going to move Z. I don't like to move the Z if I don't have to. But this is again, if this is a situation where you need to uh, move your carriage out of the way, etc., you would change this. So again, uh, I'm going to do this on a Prusa style printer. So just by moving the XY should be enough. Uh, retraction amount, I'm going to leave it at 5 uh, because I want a solid retraction uh, as it pulls away. So 4 to 5 typically should be good with most hot ends. Uh, the one thing, now you know, um, I have quite a bit of room in here, and you want this to be up in the cool end while your head is sitting, it's going to be hot. So you don't want it to be dripping plastic or running plastic. So you want to have this at a, at a good height, and 4 to 5 should be good. All right, so we're now here back at our basics. Now, one of the things that I am going to do, as I mentioned, since I'm going to cinch this up against the bottom, just some other basic things I've done, is uh, I'm going to use a top and bottom thickness of 0.9. So I'm going to give it uh, three layers uh, to make this really strong. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an infill density of about 20%. And uh, that should be pretty good for my infill density. Uh, because again, again, I'm going with some pretty strong um, uh, you know, layers since I'm going with three layers. And then my shelf thickness is going to be two because I've got a 0.4 nozzle, so basically two shells, which should be pretty good to support it again since I'm using three layers uh, for top and bottom. Uh, I'm going to use a print temperature of about 210 on the PLA, bed temperature of 60, print speed of about 50. This should be good. Now one of the keys here, you want to make sure supports are turned off. So this is the one thing, especially doing something like this, you don't want supports to be in there because what will happen is that will fill this opening with supports and you obviously won't be able to place your nuts in there. So you really have to kind of take heed of what you're printing and, and the type of object and what supports. And my suggestion would be if you're going to have an object that requires supports is I would build the supports in uh, to the object manually or um, 
something like that if you're going to use Cura. Uh, I know uh, Simplify 3D has the ability to place supports where you need to. Unfortunately, I don't believe you can do that with Cura. Um, so anyways, just some uh, little tips. And most of the things I think you're going to do, you can work around the print to make it fit. So anyways, enough talking. Let's send this over to the printer. I'm going to print this on the tarantula, and then we'll take a look at it over there, and we'll actually drop the nuts in, and I'll show you how it's done. So let's head over to the printer. Okay, so here we are. You watched it just stop, so it kicked it out uh, the 20 by 20. Now what we do is we have our stuff, and no, we don't have our stuff because I moved it on the last run. So hang on a quick second. Okay, so lesson number one, have your stuff ready. So okay, I've got the stuff ready. It fits. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this bolt to set it in here. Now, one of the things, I made this a little bit large because the plastic contracts and I want to make sure this fits. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on this. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this Gorilla Glue. Now, this Gorilla Glue is more so made for wood in that because it reacts with the moisture in the air and it sort of foams up when it dries. And so what I want to do is I just want to put a little bit on here. And the idea is is not really to hold it but what will happen is this will expand and hold the the nut in place and so I actually want to get a little bit more on there and, uh, okay that should be good all right, so then I just turn this, and voila, it's all good. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do roughly the same with the second one. Now I'm being careful not to get this on the threads. I just want this to go on the outside because what what'll happen is this will fill up the void once it cures. And again, same thing. I got a little bit of room in there. So I'm going to just dab a little bit on the sides here. And then that should run down. All right. So now this is pretty much set. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to restart the printer. So I'm waiting. It says waiting for user input. I just hit the button and here we go again. So now this is. Uh, going ahead and uh, printing. Now I left a little bit of extra room in the top uh, because I've got some room to play with there uh, which is okay and so it'll cover it up. Um, and now I know a little bit because I've been trying to juggle back and forth because one of the harder pieces and you'll be able to check out the video on this on the OpenSCAD site is really not being able to see inside the object of how much room I really have. So I left myself a little bit extra room and I think I'll be okay. So. Anyways, uh, when this is done, we'll head over to the bench and we'll check it out. Okay, so we're back at the bench. It's finished printing off, and here you see it. Um, I'll try to zoom in, but you can see the, the nuts inside here. They came out uh, pretty good. There's a little bit of stringing from uh, when it came back over and laid it down without a little bit of that support, but that'll be easy to clean out. I can just take a screwdriver and pop that out so not concerned about that. Uh, I am going to let this set up overnight, let that Gorilla Glue do its thing and expand to take up that little bit of extra room I had in there and then I'm going to assemble my final project because I want to cinch down and I'm going to have to do it with a little bit of force and so you know I, I want to make sure that that's got as much support in there as possible and again I've done I've, I've designed this with two exterior and three horizontal shells uh, so it should be pretty pretty strong to hold everything to and you again um, Probably in the next video you'll see what this goes to but I wanted to show uh, Inserting parts and some of the little bit of tips and tricks I use like using the Gorilla Glue How to use Cura to stop the print uh, how you restart it again You know I always had that question you just hit the button and it starts again. It's just a, a, a pause in the g-code So uh, you know just a, a dwell move to a position and dwell <clears throat> so anyways, hopefully you found this interesting and useful when you're designing your projects. 
And if you did, hey, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. You can pound that thumb button down there. Helps us out. Um, also, subscribe button is going to be coming up over there. If you're not a subscriber, please do. Get regular videos coming out at least twice weekly. Uh, also, swag shop up there. If you're a geek maker, hey, check it out. It helps the again support the channel. And we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like, below and subscribe.